are some of the pitfalls that preparers of group accounts need to avoid? When it comes to preparing group accounts or consolidated financial statements, however you want to refer to them as, um, one thing that I would say right at the outset is that they can be very, very technical depending on the complexity of the group. Many groups, particularly in the UK and Republic of Ireland, are quite diverse and they often have subsidiaries that are located overseas. Um, they often have um, different sort of companies in very diverse industries that have complex transactions included in them. So the reality is, is that group accounts can be extremely complicated to prepare. So it is worth going back to basics sometimes if you're not used to preparing group accounts or if, for example, you, you want to refresh it on how to prepare them. So some of the pitfalls that avoid, uh, preparers need to avoid include forgetting to eliminate transactions and balances correctly. Keep in mind that group accounts have to present the results of the group in line with its economic substance, which is that of a single trading entity. So all intercompany transactions and balances have got to be eliminated on consolidation. Forgetting to eliminate intragroup profits in stock as well is often overlooked, as well as intragroup profits or losses on things like fixed asset transfers. The consolidated balance sheet should only contain the parent share capital. Um, so don't consolidate the share capital when it comes to preparing the group balance sheet. Um, one thing that is often missed as well is the difference between international financial reporting standards and UK GAAP. Uh, and this is a key difference in terms of directly attributable costs of an acquisition. Under UK GAAP, we capitalise directly attributable costs of an acquisition in with the goodwill calculation. We don't write them off on, uh, to the group P&L account, as is the case under IFRS 3. So understanding the notable differences between IFRS and UK GAAP is one of the most uh, important things um, to understand when it comes to preparing group group accounts. And the final one I would say is failing to amortise goodwill under UK GAAP because in the group balance sheet you will you will see the goodwill calculation uh, or the goodwill balance um, and goodwill under FRS 102 must be amortised on a systematic basis over its useful economic life. Now under the IFRS regime goodwill is not amortised, it's tested for impairment at each balance sheet date which again is another difference that preparers need to understand in order to be able to prepare the consolidated financial statements under UK GAAP correctly. Mm -hmm.